My name is Aaron. I'm a nuclear scientist and that always seems to interest people. I often get a lot of smiles. But it's just like any other job, really. It's something I do every day and it's not too different to what a lot of other people do. I've always wanted to help people and energy helps us every day, whether we're making a cup of tea or powering our hospitals at night. We're helping to provide energy for the nation in a clean and sustainable way. And it's a really exciting industry to be a part of. I spent 11 years in the British Army as an engineer and I decided that I'm coming out, I want to do something a bit more challenging. Building a nuclear reactor is extremely challenging. It's like building a 747 in a field using people who've never done it before. The building is very constrained, the quality standards are very high, the paperwork standards, the oversight is very high. It's amazing that they're able to do it. They're better able to do it if you get them to build one and then build another. I think for me, the moment I realised that I wanted to work in the nuclear industry was when I was sort of assessing how do we actually get to net zero? How does the world get to net zero? And right now, the only viable option includes nuclear power. I wanted to be a part of an industry that was going to make a difference. And I think, for me, nuclear has been the answer to that. I grew up in Kirkcaldy in Fife in Scotland, a mining town. My granddad was a miner. I then studied energy engineering at university and really it led me on a path to nuclear as part of the solution to tackle climate change. I've been involved in all different types of energy generation and power generation in those 30 years. But eventually when I found that I needed to try and contribute to part of the solution, uh, it became obvious to me as an engineer that nuclear energy was the place I wanted to apply my efforts to try and make a difference. Hello, my name is Andy Storer. I'm the Chief Executive of the Nuclear AMRC. It's the world's largest advanced manufacturing research centre for the nuclear industry. The technology we use in the nuclear industry is robust, it's safe, it does what it says on the tin, you know, it produces power. We're going through a phase of modernisation through advanced reactors, small modular reactors and fusion technology. So we're constantly trying to improve and advance the technology. The government published their energy strategy which committed to 25% of British power coming from nuclear in the future. I think it's really important that the nuclear industry delivers on its gigawatt scale projects such as Hinkley Point C, Size Will C and anything that comes beyond that, as well as turning to products like a Rolls-Royce SMR which can further help decarbonise other sectors. An SMR is a small modular reactor and it's a response by the industry of coming up with a different way of delivering nuclear energy to make it smaller, more digestible, more investable. It's a different way of creating a nuclear power plant that takes advantage of modern methods of manufacturing and innovations and how we can actually produce these, these different types of technologies. One of the ways that the industry is thinking about dealing with this thing is building smaller reactors because they're easier to finance and you can have a program of small reactors so if instead of say a couple of Hinkley's six gigawatts if you had smaller reactors of perhaps 250 megawatts that's 24 reactors factory built modularized this is the way in all industry that costs have been brought under control standardization and repetition we are actually very keen to make something that has an iconic impact on the landscape. A power plant doesn't need to be an ugly thing. What we've tried to do with our design is create something that is iconic, that is eye-catching. And when you look at our SMR, it doesn't look anything like what you assume a nuclear power plant will look like. So, Aaron, where are we off to? So we're off to Oldbury Power Station, one of the first nuclear reactors in the UK. It's an old Magnox reactor that generated electricity for much longer than they were originally planned to. They were kind of workhorse of electricity production in the UK for 30, 40, 50 years, depending on which site you go to. A lot of it is actually just like a normal building site. There'll be admin buildings, there'll be a turbine hall, and that's where the electricity would be generated. The steam would go through these, these huge turbine blades, turn them at huge RPM, and that turns a coil around a magnet which generates electricity. And that's kind of the basic process of how electricity is made. This thing all starts out with Fermi in Chicago in the early 1940s when he took over what we would call a squash court in an athletic stadium and built the first reactor with some balls of natural uranium and piles of graphite and a rather rudimentary shutdown system and he proved that it would work 
and as a result of that, the nuclear age was born. So yeah, turbine hall, that, that's one part of it. Then you've got the reactor buildings, these two big old cylindrical concrete buildings, which have huge amounts of radiation shielding within them. And they've been built to last. So you'll see how well they've held up over the years. The deeper you get inside, you'll get about 10 square meters of the reactor core. And this has already been removed from site. So they, they've defueled this site. There's no active radioactivity there. We're an industry that has been dealing with its waste for 50, 60, 70 years now, and there hasn't been a single incident with nuclear waste. We've been doing it safely for years, so even if we don't build a deep ground disposal facility, that is the plan, but if for some reason that doesn't happen, we can still continue to store it on site safely for thousands of years to come. It's really not a problem. This is a highly regulated industry. There's a tremendous amount of defence and depth so we build safety into everything we do as, a, as an industry. We create, and every place that I've been where nuclear power operates or is involved, there's a tremendous focus on the culture of safety, the nuclear culture of safety and the generic culture of safety. It's an incredibly stringently scrutinized industry. We have the highest safety standards in the world. It's called a nuclear safety culture for a reason. Are you saying that when your job's effectively done, that it will almost be as though there was no nuclear power plant there in the first place. We don't want there to be nothing left because we want to leave a, po a positive lasting impact on the community. From an environmental point of view, I'd say it's actually been a positive impact because of the wild habitats that have been created, huge amounts of biodiversity um, you'll see around the site, uh, and it's actually been declared a, a triple SI, a site of scientific um, special interest because of the, the birds, the migrating birds that have taken up a home near the site. So in a lot of cases it's better than it was from an environmental point of view. Do you remember first hearing about the concept of nuclear? Were you a kid? What? Yeah, I was always in love with fusion. It was always fusion that kind of caught my eye. This magical technology, the, the explosions in the sun captured, um, and using that to kind of produce clean, infinite energy from the most abundant isotope and element in the universe. It, it sounds like a dream. I did a lot of research into it. I decided to do a master's after my chemical engineering degree. I did a master's in nuclear engineering. Um, and it was there that I really learned that fusion, we, we think we know we want want fusion to do, but fission, fission already does everything we want fusion to do. Fission is really little waste, it's almost infinite energy, uranium is incredibly abundant in the Earth, Earth's core, it even exists in seawater which we can extract. We've got enough uranium to power our lifestyles as they are for four billion years. That's about the same scale of life of our sun. Our sun's going to last for about eight billion years. So. I don't think we, we need to worry too much about how much fuel we have. It's almost an infinite supply of, of nuclear fission we've got at our hands. So that's, that's really excited me when I learned about this. And we talk about waste. We, we think we've got these issues with nuclear fission waste. But the real problem is climate change. We're dumping all of this fossil fuel waste into our atmosphere, unmitigated, unmeasured and nobody's taking responsibility for it. The nuclear industry takes very great care and great responsibility for its waste that it produces. Every little bit is accounted for, logged, and kind of tied up with the international authorities, the International Atomic Energy Agency. And there's so much regulation around it that this is why we have sites that create a net positive benefit to the local communities. And I don't think that can be said for fossil fuels. There's been so much science and so much work done into nuclear, nuclear technology over the past 70 years. In fact, it saves an incredible number of lives that wouldn't be possible without civil nuclear reactors and research reactors. Australia and Canada have research reactors which produce medical isotopes. They can be used as radioactive traces. So the amount of radiation you get from them is incredibly low but the benefit you can get from diagnosing cancers and, and different issues is huge. For example, certain cancers can be detected with these radioactive traces. These isotopes run through your body and be shown on an imaging technique which can detect where a tumor might be. Some isotopes, for example, molybdenum-99, can be used to treat cancers. 
and save lives. No. Nuclear is one of the safest forms of energy we have. Statistically, it is as safe as wind turbines and solar panels. Fossil fuels are the real issue. Fossil fuels is what we need to get rid of. Nuclear is safe. We need to invest more into it. Nuclear loves being talked about. We see radioactive spiders and all sorts of things in, in pop culture and in media, and that, that creates this buzz about it. People love to hear about the next big radioactive issue, but, but the reality is it's quite boring to some degree. It's not gonna make you a Spider-Man or radioactive man or whatever it is. Honestly, there's nothing to be afraid of with nuclear. I know that might sound out there, but radiation is all around us. We get exposed to cosmic radiation every day. There's radiation from Brazil nuts and bananas that we eat every day. Nuclear is one of the, the safest forms of energy and much, much safer than, than the real issue, fossil fuels. We need to get ourselves off fossil fuels and use things like wind, solar, and nuclear. I think I'd like people to know more about nuclear is that it provides 20% of our electricity for Britain today. That's clean energy. That's also 40% of our clean energy in Britain. So I just wish people knew more about uh, what nuclear's contribution is and also how safe nuclear is. It gets a bit of a bad rep, really, and uh, I don't think that's fair. What do you think they imagine you do? I think they see Homer Simpson sat in a control room pinging buttons, but the reality is it's normally in front of a computer or working on a technical strategy document or doing some calculations or even going onto a site like the one behind me and, and getting really hands-on and yeah, just making sure that we're producing clean electricity for the nation. People are always surprised when my partner and I go out and I tell them I work in nuclear. It's been eye-opening to be a female in nuclear that there's loads and loads of opportunities to do very cool things um, and people want you on their teams. I think going forward, the government have set out their nuclear sector deal strategy and within that they have set a target to have 40% females in nuclear by 2030. I would tell any female looking at joining the industry that it's such an interesting industry to be in with so many opportunities that really you can build a career for life doing whatever you want, whether that's marketing, whether that's finance, whether you're an engineer, whether you want to work in construction. There's a job for everybody. The NI is incredible at bringing together different people from different backgrounds, working with government, working with young people, supporting young people to make sure that they've got the skills they need to do the job that they need to, and also connecting people from, from a whole variety of backgrounds. I joined the Nuclear Institute so that I could join the Young Generation Network because I wanted to be able to expand the network of people that I was going to meet in my nuclear career. I work in New Build, but some of my friends from the YGN work in decommissioning, work in safety, work in consultancy, come from different areas of the industry that I wouldn't necessarily be exposed to. I think for young people, joining the NI is an obvious choice. All sorts of different scientific bodies have shown that pathways to net zero require a lot more nuclear. We, we've kind of come to this from a, a very scientific standpoint. We're not saying that we think net zero needs nuclear. We're giving a voice to the real scientists out there who've done the modeling, who've done the hard work, and found that net zero does need nuclear. As part of an energy mix with uh, other low carbon energy sources like wind and solar and a way to balance the grid, this is the way forward. We will not get to net zero unless we embrace nuclear and that's one of the reasons why we've developed our Rolls-Royce SMR technology is to contribute. This is a very purposeful industry and our outcome that we're focused on is about changing the planet. It's as, it's as bold as that. We need to build about 10 gigawatts of new nuclear almost every year until 2050, from 2030 to 2050. And I don't think we recognize how big a scale that is. Hinkley Point C will bring on about three gigawatts of energy. So we need to be building about three of those every year from 2030 to 2050. This is humongous numbers that a generation, more than one generation is gonna really need to get behind if we wanna make a big difference.